chunk. Well, here we are on YouTube and Discord and Patreon, wherever you're seeing us for this video, we welcome you. We welcome you. We welcome in anyone who is a fan of Pink Floyd, and especially anyone who's a fan of us, because that's that's clearly why you're here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> One of the greatest selling albums of all time did not bring you here. It was me and Nathan. <laughs> me and Nathan. Yeah. Well, and if you are new to the channel, let me just say we, our whole shtick is that we try not to sugarcoat any of it. We just, you know, we say our opinions, um, and if people don't like them, it's too bad, because our whole shtick here is that we don't try and like pretend that. We, we like the music or something like that. Now, having said that, I have a feeling with this particular album, I think this is going to be like right, right up our alley here. I, I'm nervous. We did the album afterwards. So Stephen, we should say this is a Patreon request. Stephen chose our album tier on Patreon, and this right. was his album choice for us to listen to this month. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously this is a huge album. Like we're not going to say anything that anyone's not going to already know. So uh, we apologize to the Pink Floyd fanatics and fans out there. Please don't add us and say, blah, blah, blah. We, we understand. Wikipedia is a thing. We know we can research, but we're here for the musical experience. Well, you know, if we were to buy this album blind back in 1973, and my buddy says, you got to buy this album, dude. There's no internet. And I've never heard Pink Floyd before. You put it on. And what's your experience? That's kind of how we attack things. We don't go too deep into it. You know how the song was written on what we're just yeah. literally experiencing the product and here's the funny thing i wonder when pink floyd made this album did they say okay guys before you listen to our album i want you to research i want you to research everyone who sang on every song i want you to know but it's yeah. funny how 2022 people get mad at reactors saying how come you don't know what i know for the past 50 years anyways yeah. so we're just yeah we're just the, the disclaimer is that's kind of what we do speaking of shtick it's not really shtick but it's Nathan and I like to go in semi-blind. Like we're aware this is a huge album. We understand that Pink Floyd's an amazing band that has millions of fans. And this is an album that you and I have seen the cover of our whole life. It's kind of it's always been there in our pop culture psyche. Yep. And anyways, we talked about our feelings of Pink Floyd on other videos. Check it out. We did um Wish You Were Here. That was the album's name, right? The yep. one after this one. Okay, yep. so Steven Steven gave us that one to listen to last month. Mm-hmm. And we loved it. We enjoyed it. And it was, uh, again, it was, I, I like experiencing the album. So I think Pink Floyd is, that's the kind of thing with them. But you have to experience it as an album. Mm-hmm. So we are going to pause the songs. After the songs. Not after the song is played. That's right. We're not going to pause mid song. So we just want to let people know that we do listen to the whole song. And then we, we're not so much reacting as we are just, well, reviewing and talking about how the songs make us feel and any thoughts we have on the lyrics and what have you. And Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, 45 million albums sold approximately. Whew. Yeah. <laughs> this is the this is the album. Apparently, tell me if I'm wrong. This is the album that this is the one that put them in that stratosphere. Okay. I mean, this is their eighth studio album, but this is the one that kind of like got me. They've never. Attention. Yeah, they they never looked back type of thing. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Yeah, I mean, most people have already skipped all of what you just said and went to the part where we just go to the music right so. right oh well here we go here we go let's get started so we're they just want to they, they just want us to bop our heads that's yeah. all they so let's we're gonna listen to the first two back to back and then we'll right s- after that so here we go yeah steven's in our discord chat and he's guiding us through he'll let us know where we need to pause okay excellent oh swears right away For a second there, I thought the song wasn't on. It's a heartbeat. I didn't even catch that. Yeah, you're right. Oh, this sounds familiar. Ha, ha, ha. 
<laughs> so the next song, Nathan, D- uh, David Gilmore singing the track two. Okay. I feel like I've heard. Okay. The only song I know on this album is Money. Oh, that's on this album. I know that one for sure. Well, the bass seems even like heavier on this than the other album, Wish You Were Here. Right? Okay, so I, I'm fairly certain I've heard that before, and and the only reason I and this kind of connects to what I said in mm. the other album that we did for Pink Floyd because I spent some time as a laborer. Yes, that's right. I've worked with my hands. Um, so I used to work in construction, uh, laying carpet and and tile and floor and all that stuff. And and when I and when the songs would come on the radio, I'm positive that that came on the radio at some point. Hmm. Um, but I hadn't paid any attention to it. Um, either right. that, either that, or this sounds a lot like other Pink Floyd songs, and that just sounds a lot. I like think it. that might be what it is. Because um, "Breathe" was was that the name of the song? Sorry, "Breathe." Uh, yeah, uh, "Breathe." "Breathe in the air." Yeah. So I, I would say <clears throat> that's what I'm getting now when I'm listening to this Pink Floyd. Starting with the two albums that were well, now the second album that we're listening to fully. They have a sound. They have a mm-hmm. style, which every band has a sound or a style. That that's that's their their stepping off point. You can't just you know again. I was just use Metallica as an example. Like if you just all of a sudden they uh, they pull out a country guitar and a violin, you're like, well, that's not the stepping off point, right? They might they might lead into it <laughs> over mm-hmm. years or, or something, but you you have a certain sound that fans, your fan base, will have to be. So often when fan, bands change their sound, you know, it upsets mm-hmm. fans because, hey, wait a minute, that's not the sound I, you know. Yeah. So definitely Pink Floyd, this, in this era, I understand the early era was very prog and different, but that's the thing is this this sound is very, that Pink Floyd sound. So I don't think, oh, I know I've never heard that song before. Okay. Um, again, reading the titles of this album, Money is the only one I know, and I've never really listened listened to it. I just know, Money, mm-hmm. that's right. Yeah, mm-hmm. okay. Mm-hmm. I know the title. Was it on a TV show? 
oh, I feel it's, like it's been used many times because it's it's a very like theme song, right? For that right. idea of like being um, like in over your head with money. I, I don't know. I haven't read the lyrics either, so that'll be new for me. But right, um, I do really enjoy this sound. Like this is the, again like back to. It feels like at some point, maybe maybe Pink Floyd. No, nah, that's not true. Pink Floyd will always be there. I'm just thinking like, as far as like a a a, a song or or particular sound to use with uh, visuals, it feels like it goes hand in hand with visuals to me. Like I'm listening to it and I'm imagining things, which like is like cool. the Wizard of Oz. Well, no, but like like <laughs> what it's like what comes to mind is is visuals come to mind, and I and I love that. I love it when music does that, and so that's that's what I like about. Uh, their sound is because it, it puts visuals in my mind, which is great. Oh, very well said. Very well said. I believe a lot of people have probably listened to Pink Floyd under influence of things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I'm sure they saw all kinds of visuals. Yeah, well, seriously. And then I also think that um, that's what they want yeah. is their music provides a visual landscape within your brain. Mm -hmm. Because I know their concerts are big on the lasers and things like that. So, right. But yeah, they, they, I think they feel the same way as you, Nathan. Good job. Yeah. Okay, so this next one is called, uh, oh, sorry, uh, On the Run. Apparently, Sorry, I can't get it to show up on my screen for some reason. Yeah, it's called On the Run, but it shows lyrics. Oh, I think, okay. There it is. I think, right. I think the lyrics, I believe, if I read this correctly, on the interwebs. Just wait one sec. I'll edit accordingly. Um, is it like a, it looks more like. It's like it's not. text dialogue. I think it's from a. Uh, it's like a recording. It's, yeah. it's a recording, like interviews or something. Sure. So I'm not sure who the voices are. Maybe yeah. it's okay. Steve could tell us. Yeah. So it's an instrumental, is what I'm getting at. But there's mm -hmm. talking in the background, so we have the advantage of actually reading that. Okay. Cool. Ready? Yeah. Yeah, I'm ready. Hmm. On the run. Running. Oh. The Metatron. Oh, okay. It's like the audio from an airport terminal. Yeah. So the band is on the run. Band on the run. <laughs> Imagine if you were the one that like that was doing the announcement back in the '70s, and they're like, well, yeah. "That's hey, my, I, that's my voice." Yeah, she's English all of a sudden. That's, can't you I hear her I, British I, I, accent? Seems like space flight. This is very uh, oh. otherworldly to me. Yeah. Space train. Yeah, space train. Base speed in there, and it would be like techno. <laughs> I wonder if this is early use of the loop. Oh. Like the drum part, I wonder. Like, I, is that really Nick Mason right. doing that the whole time, or is, or is it, it a drum loop? machine? Or yeah, a loop or, yeah. There's a lot of other electronic sounds, right? trained. 
taking off? That was a guitar. It sounded like a gu guitar doing that sound, though, maybe. Oh, was that you coughed? Nope. <laughs> Is no. that a ghost? No, it's... I know. It's someone in my house. Oh, I thought it was, I thought it was on the track. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So 1973, so this must have been when when people heard this sounds. I, I'm trying to think, you know, of course, you and I weren't even alive. This is amazing. This was out before you and I were born, this album. Mm -hmm. um, I suspect in early 70s, I wonder how many bands were doing this kind of sound of like, I hate to say futuristic, but it sounds like kind of a futuristic, fast paced, techno type sound before that mm -hmm. was even a word. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Yeah, it's that kind of push to like create sounds of the future that like there there was more push for that in the 70s I think than any other time. You don't hear that really in the 60s very much. Mm -hmm. You know, and then by the 80s everyone's using it, right? So the 70s kind of like catapults everyone into this electronic um you know, push for for sounds and then the 80s just like saturated with it so sure yeah, yeah. yeah it, it, interesting interlude or uh, in between song um again this is the type of song that it's part of that theme of yeah. the album i don't know if people say i'm going to put on this song and this song alone yeah if it's, that makes sense it's, it's a the transit the yeah, theme absolutely. that that concept that transition yeah okay so the next song is called time the title sounds familiar, but there's been so many songs with time, so we'll see. I don't. It was the music was yeah. written by all four members of the band. Okay. And the lead vocals is Gilmore and Wright sharing vocals. All right, let's listen. let's give it a listen. And before we get to the song five, Stephen, uh, let us know who Tori is, because lead vocals is Tori on the next song. I don't know who that is. Okay. Hmm. All right. <laughs> the clocks yeah time is about realizing that your life has already started and that maybe you've missed opportunities that's from Steven <laughs> you know what this reminds me of the beginning of Back to the Future oh <laughs> I'm late for school! <laughs> <laughs> oh, this sounds familiar. Oh, yes. I've heard this. But have you listened? Not with my best friend. Have you read the lyrics before? Not with my best friend. Going for an eye roll. <clears throat> this one comes up on the radio a lot. Well, this was a side B of a single. Really? Yeah, Us and Them was the single, and this was, I guess, the side B of that single. Yeah. Mm.
Now, who's singing this lead part here? Waiting for someone or something to show you the way. I don't know. I think it's Roger, I think. lyrics. Oh yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. I don't know if I ever noticed that voice there. I mean, I don't know if you ever listened to this song. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I definitely know that song. I mean, as I'm listening to that, I just went back to the place where I've, you know, heard this before, and I imagined myself with a glue trowel spreading that glue all over the floor. <laughs> so it, it it's a great song, it, and it, but then like doing it now and watch, listening to it with you makes me go like, I just didn't appreciate it for what it was. It was just like a song on the radio that sounded good, you know, and going through it and listening to it very carefully with headphones on makes me understand like just the the genius behind the song right it's there's a lot of stuff going on there that i'm like like 
who thought of this stuff in the 70s? So it's like, I don't know. you know, this like just killer bass line along with that, that solo in the middle there was just like, I don't know if I've ever heard a solo as long as that performed before that or as like unique, really. Um, so yeah, what it's a solid song. Like it's a, it's a classic. There's no, no question in my mind. This is a classic song. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> yes. What? You're, just, like, you're waiting? What are you waiting no, for? No, no. I just, yes, Nathan, this is a, a classic song on, off the number one album of all time almost. Uh, no, I'm just, I'm just teasing I'll just you. Eat my cheese. <laughs> no, don't eat. Don't eat. You can't eat. People don't like that. They Too don't want to watch that. Too late. We have lost viewers. We have lost viewers. Oh. Okay. Anyways, our tens of tens of viewers have left our channel. Um, Offended I, by may, cheese. May, Maybe, of course, you know, you know, you and I have been on this planet for 40, almost, well, 47 years. And I'm pretty sure I've heard the song before, just like you. But I don't have any memories of hearing it. But mm. at the same time, it doesn't sound wholly unfamiliar, but I've never listened to it. And I've never listened to it with the ear of who these guys are, what they meant to the world of music. Uh, just how young they are, too. I mean, again, they're David Gilmore. I think they're all about the same age. But I just looked up David Gilmore's age. He's about 27 <laughs> wow! Like I know, I like, and it's just uh, hearing their vocal work, and then the gu- a guitar solo from David. I mean, that's why I come to Pink Floyd. I know he's I fanboy a bit about him, but I can't help it. Uh, his guitar work is just something to behold. I love that solo work, the tone, and it, you gotta wonder how other rock bands at the time. And there was there was certainly a, a good degree of like. American rock bands, what have you, that you know did solo work. I won't name any bands, but they were around. Uh, when they heard this, and they heard the guitar work of this twenty-year-old, you know, kid mm-hmm. with this with this solo work, I wonder what influence that had on them. Because there's definitely like I I call this blues rock in a very a very simple description in my books. Like like it just sounds very like boom, boom, boom. like it sounds very kind of bluesy. That some of that strumming the guitar is almost. There's so much going on around it, but it mm. seems based in blues. Am I crazy or? I, I mean, yes, all rock yes roll no. is, but it. I th- what makes it more ahead of its time, though, is like the combination of sounds. There's sort of an right. orchestral sound to it, like, you know what I mean? Like there, there's yeah, there was an orchestra work going on there, and yeah. uh, the choir singing, which the I gospel, and then there's gospel, yeah. right? You have yeah. blues and then rock, which is just like. This is this is incredible the the merging of all the different genres, in the and in the seventies the early seventies which to me just kind of yeah feels like yeah I'm I'm amazed that um, that more people weren't doing the same as them you know what I mean well when you're this big it's almost like hey good try trying to be Pink Floyd like how do you <laughs> yeah yeah you yeah. know do you really <clears throat> want to build your career off of sounded like Pink Floyd. Maybe there were bands that tried to, but yeah. it's... Oh, I'm sure there were. Yeah. I'm sure there were. Okay, so, yeah, when you're so original, like, it's kind of a silly thing, but like Quentin Tarantino, when he came out, a lot of people tried to do Pulp Fiction type films and they right. couldn't pull it off and they couldn't make a career out of it. Yeah. You know, Quentin, Quentin has continued to be him. Mm-hmm. He's the guy that became, you know, he's who he is, but when you try to rip off that style, it's pretty obvious and people are like, eh, nice try. Yeah, you, yeah, like yeah. anything, your heart has to be in it, and and I think they're from yeah. Pink Floyd's perspective, they've all got they're invested in it heavily because it feels very rich and unique, and you know, like nothing else I've heard. All right, the last song on side A is called uh, "The Great Gig in the Sky." It was written by uh, oh, sorry, it, I thought it was a female, but it's not. It's Claire. Oh, is it a female? Sorry, Claire, I'm just... Tori. Okay, no, sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I apologize. I don't mean anything by that. I just saw a picture. I thought it was just a guy. I apologize. Oh, the Wikipedia picture is not very flattering. That's not very fair to her. Okay, um, she does the vocal work on this. She helped okay. co-write it as well. And apparently, it was improvised. Hmm. There you go. The great gig in the sky. Let's the great gig in the sky. It was written by Rick Wright, but then also contributed to Claire as well, because I guess she probably improvised her vocals and lyrics, I guess. Oh. Very keyboard. Mm -hmm. I love that piano. Mm 
See that sound right there? That sound like a boom. Yeah. Almost country like, really. Yeah, that's what I wonder. Is it a. Like a. Anytime I do, I don't mind. A sit down guitar? You know, like a steel string guitar? What is it? Why should I be afraid of dying? There's no reason for it. You've got to go sometime. Pedal steel guitar. Okay, let's go that. Chills right now. I want to hear what your thoughts are. <laughs> I, okay. you, make no, me, you, you make me smile. I, it's, it's oh, sorry. I apologize. Ending, so I, I, thought you were, I, I thought you were reacting to my smiling face. I have nothing funny to say. I'm just waiting for you to talk. That's okay. all, honestly. So I guess what I... When when the beat dropped, if that makes sense. Like, it, it's not that it was... It's not a dance song. <laughs> but, like, when it, when it came in and, and her vocals hit, like, right. I, I just went, like full on like I, I, like my the, every hair or whatever was standing up that feeling of like this is incredible and I don't know if there's another song that says it more strongly than the visuals go with the vocals here like it was immediately I had this image of a video playing and how I because I love making movies I love the idea of matching um, uh, 
audio to, to visual. And, and this idea of, of what I would put with it came into my mind immediately. Mm. And I was like, oh, if, if it hasn't been, I'm sure it's been done a thousand times, but it feels like, like for me, I just love that experience. That, that's partly why I got chills because I was like, I got this like vision of what goes with this. And um, with the theme of it, you know, being death and that sort of thing, it, it's just, it's like screaming to be used if it hasn't been used already. So, yeah. Now I might say something that's you're not gonna like. No, I shouldn't say. I hate that. I shouldn't say that. Um, this is a. I, I love this. What we just heard. I thought it was a great, mm -hmm. like, performance. You can sense that this is her using her voice like an instrument. Like she's just jumped into the band, and they're mm -hmm. kind of working around her, and she's working around them. It's this cohesive type of experience where. This wasn't the first take, I understand that, but this is where they ended up. But she's singing with that emotion, thinking about death, that transition. From, you know, you get all that, you know, the, that transition from life to death, whatever, that great gig in the sky. She's just singing, you know, both scary and beautiful at the same time. Mm -hmm. But as amazing as it was to hear that and to experience that, and I'm glad I did, it's something I wouldn't reinvestigate. This is a very tricky song. I don't know if this is something that I could keep feeling again. Like you go back to the oh, song, like sure. Like yeah. you go back to the song, like time, right? Mm -hmm. I want to hear that David Gilmore lick again. I want to hear that solo right now, again and again. Mm -hmm. So it's very interesting how, even though what her singing ability, amazing, her mm -hmm. her her, and she sounds like a like a black gospel singer, but she's like a white English girl, you mm -hmm. know. So it's you know a powerful voice, um, beautiful tone. And the range is amazing, and all that stuff—it's all there. But mm -hmm. I think I—I I think this is a song that I would skip. I don't need to hear it when I go to side two. I, like, I think side one would end for me the previous song. Sure, and I would say the same thing about music. Like I use uh, a lot of stock audio for some of my videos, right? Mm. I'll, I'll find like something that that matches a, but I don't go and like listen to the stock audio. I don't have it like on my iP like on my phone. I don't listen to it regularly. It just it matches a visual for me. And like I'll, I can give you an idea what I thought of this. It, it felt like like someone like in slow motion, there's something blowing up and they're like jumping from one place to another and like bullets are flying. you know like to me it's it's, it's like a great slow motion action sequence, but without fast cuts. like everything can be slowed down. Mm -hmm. And, and this idea of death and then it could cut to something as it slows down it could like it just has this huge potential to be used so that that's why I brought it up not as a oh I can't wait to put this on the one wheel playlist like that's not what I mean it's just good for you know a lot of other things it was good oh, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I wasn't responding to what you said oh, I, see. I was just I see I see, I see. No, I, I was no I was just saying Pink Floyd is those albums that people listen to all the way through is yeah. often what we hear. Yeah. And I would wonder if people who listen to this album as an album experience might find themselves. Eh, eh. Yeah, sure. I kind of I get it. it. It just, it seems sort of out of place a mm. little bit. The theme is in place about mm. death and time. And I just feel like, again, I'm glad I heard it. I'm glad I experienced it. Amazing talents all around. The keyboard work was nice. Um, I think I almost would have re-listened to the song if it was just an instrumental without the singing. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. So I find, though she's very talented what she's doing here, I kind of find it out of place hmm. for this concept album. Yeah. Okay. Well, all right. Yeah, I disagree with you, but that's I'm okay to you. move on from that. Wow. What? <laughs> <laughs> let's, flip the, let's flip the LP over. What do you got next? What's our next one? Okay, we'll start the record playing on the other side. Oh, here we go. Oh, yeah. This one I know, of course, money. But I don't remember totally how it goes. Like, I just know the money. Money, 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 money. I know, money. I know the riff really well. What, what, what TV show? Oh, there's like an artist that ripped off this cash register sound for a song in the... Oh, what was that one? Didn't uh, The Apprentice use this? Oh, maybe that's where it was from. That's right. Oh, that's terrible. It's such a... It's like it, the irony just spills all over. Oh, yeah, that's not, that's not a good look. Yeah. Money! Get away. 
Actually, this is very blues, is it not? Is this not? Gilmore singing. Both hands and make a stash. New car can be our force. They dream think of my football team. I've never heard these lyrics like listen to them. It's so true. People do exactly that. It's hilarious. Yeah. That line, Get sir, I'll say it later. Yeah. Such a dirty sax solo. I love yeah. it. Great transitions. <laughs> I was in, uh, you 
certainly was in the right. Yeah, definitely. Like he cruising for a bruising. Cruising for a bruising. <laughs> Okay, it's gone into the next song, and I want to. Yeah, just, the. Just of go, course, yeah. Go back to the last. I want to show you a line. So, okay. <clears throat> there's a line here. Um, Grab that cash with both hands and make a stash. A new car, caviar, four-star daydream. Think I'll buy me a football team. In, have you seen Pink Floyd: The Wall? No. Have okay. you? Yeah, I have. There's, when? A, there's. I don't know. Well, that's weird. In the thirty plus years that we weren't in the same room with each other. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. In that, uh, there's a scene at the beginning of um, uh, the "We Don't Need No Education." Anyway, and the the schoolmaster is like he, he he's like, "Oh, look, he's wrote a poem, poems," and he picks this picks it up from the kid and he reads those lines from this song out right. loud. And he like thinks he's a poet. Oh, and then he like he's just like after he finishes reading it, he's like, absolute rubbish. And then like, they go back to like this crappy school system. Anyway, that's, I, I, when I saw the lines written out, I didn't know that it was lines from this song oh. that it was in that, uh, in, in, uh, okay. Well, anyway. Good memory. Yeah. Now we're not going to get, uh, anyone to request that album for us. Well, I would absolutely sit alongside you watching Doing the Wall. It, it's a great... I think set. somebody talked about it, but it's a double album. So if anyone is actually really wanting us to do that... But we should do the video, not it's, the... It's a, well, this is like a double album. It's like four sides or something. It's huge. But the video is, is fantastic, yeah. Well, I, yeah, whatever they want us to do. Like, I, I'm just saying. I'm not going to... It's a double album. If, it's if like anyone's out there, long. please pledge the wall, the, the video, because it would be great. Yeah, how long is the video compared to the album? Because I looked on Wikipedia. Because someone talked about it, it was four sides, so I was just like, okay. Yeah, I think the album's longer than the video, way longer. Oh, maybe. Okay. All right. So yeah. So Stephen said, "Well done, well done, Nathan. Can't believe you remember that. Yeah, good for you." Uh, someone else says that the album sucks. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, really? Wow, that's a hot yeah, take. I don't know. Um, uh, now I know. Yes, I know that. Of course, that chorus because I did watch The Apprentice back in the day, uh, but I've heard it before. Of course, before that mm. reality TV show. But like Steven said in our chat, most people like me because I've never owned an album have only heard the radio edit, which is like three minutes shorter than the album edit or the album version. So that whole middle part with the solo, the changes, that bah, 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 mm -hmm. I don't know if that's in the radio edit. I don't know it enough. Mm. I think, but that is, means. But yeah. But th that long, so well, it can't be. They chopped oh. something out. They yeah. chopped. They must have chopped out that musical interlude part. Mm -hmm. That whole, mm -hmm. uh, which is the best part of the song. Like money. Oh, it's like dum dum. It's it's pretty. I want to say standard fare because I don't. People get mad at me about Pink Floyd, but <laughs> but what made what what makes that song? Because it's actually not. It's a, it's one of the more least interesting songs for me. The one I knew about. Like it. Like as far as. I don't know if I'd get excited about that song. I wasn't going to get excited listening to that song knowing that it was on this album because I knew the chorus. However, mm -hmm. dot, 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 what I'm getting at, when it kicked into the part that wasn't the radio edit, <laughs> I'm just saying to myself, A, it's fresh in my ears, and B, it's the best part of the song. So mm -hmm. I don't know why. Uh, well said. I, I, I agree. I, yeah, I, I just don't know why they would take that. I guess radio time is only so long. But it, to me, as a music guy, and the guitar, the guitar parts, David Gilmore's guitar work is the best part of that song. So it's... I guess the only album, I mean, the only version I'll ever listen to from here on out would be, of course, the album version. I, I, I don't, I can't imagine anyone would go listen to the radio edit after yeah. hearing that. Yeah, I always think of that sax solo as like the dirtiest sax solo alive. Like it's, it just comes in so, brrr, like just like, it, I don't know how to like explain it. it you it, did, you did a very good job. You like dirty sax. <laughs> Oh, I so set that up for you. Oh, I didn't mean to, but that was hilarious. Okay. And if and uh, you know who else likes dirty sax? Uh, the uh, sax the sax player Dick. <laughs> no, no. Yes, Dick. No. <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> Dick likes dirty sacks. <laughs> Don't you mean Richard? No, his name is Dick Perry. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh. Okay. So. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, this, this always, uh, this channel always keeps me alive. All right. Yeah. I don't know why anyone pays us to do anything. <laughs> us All and right. them. Us, us and, and them. them. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. It wasn't coming on Fader Gilmore does lead vocals as well. On this one? Okay. Yeah. Music written by Wright, the keyboards. I don't know who was really drunk at the time. I don't know who was really drunk at the time. It has the same keyboard beginning as George Michael's Faith. <laughs> yeah. Because you gotta have faith, 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 faith. faith, faith. Baby. <laughs> that was obviously a uh, George Michael obviously borrowed that beginning. Oh yeah, down, yeah. down family. Sacks. Yeah. Again, played by Dick. It was beautiful sound. This is very, uh, walking downtown with your girl, summer night. I don't think that's the making love the theme of the song, though. But interesting to point that out. I think that's intentional, obviously. And after all, we're only ordinary men. This is very... 70s Floyd. They get, this is them sounding like they are from the 70s here at this moment, you know. Mm -hmm. very ahead of its time and who knows which is which and who is who
give him a quick sh- show, sharp, shock, they don't do it again. Dig it, I mean, he got a flight because I couldn't get him a fraction of it once. So he did it for two and a half long in it. I mean, good man, this don't cost nothing, do they? Hey. A transition right away. Oh, that, that, okay, okay. To the next song, uh, I have heard that song again. It's another one of those songs where. Jeez, oh, man, oh man, I feel like Stevie's got ripped off here. <laughs> but I, I didn't know any. Of these, this was like on this album, I guess. I just I've never read the lyrics, and I didn't mm. know that that's what it was about. I had no idea that it was about us, War, yeah. us and them. And I, yeah, I love it. I actually really like. I love it that much more because of, of the content, the lyrics. It's very like, I said it in the middle of the song. It's, it's ahead of its time. Really? This time. Well, no, it, like, okay. Time. That was this track on this album. I know, but it, like the this song, song is, it is ahead of its time. It's actually, it, this is a track after time. <laughs> it's ahead of, okay, not everything's a joke. Okay. <laughs> in my head, it is. No, <laughs> I Paul, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yes, um, you're... it is. It, it, so like this idea that like <laughs> we're in this. I don't know. It's one of my constant complaints is how often we go into that us and them scenario where, mm-hmm. you know, it, it's it's an indictment I think of societies that that live off of that dynamic of it's either one or the other, the either or fallacy. This idea that everything is just one or the other. Um, mm-hmm. You put people into camps. And I know that Pink, Pink Floyd is heavily influenced by, because they were all born kind of World War II-ish or before, and some of them lived through it. Then mm-hmm. along comes the Vietnam War and the Korean War and all the other wars that were going on. And this like idea that you know, society is going to kill itself over stupid things, um, it, I think it really bothered them. You definitely see it in, you know, uh, in the wall. I think that's a, a theme in the wall as well. So it, mm. it's kind of like this. I love this song. I really think this is a this is the kind of song that people need to read the lyrics today and, and just go like, it's not everything's black and white. Yeah. No, it's there. good. Well said. No, I like it. Well said, Nathan. As always. 
Uh, beautiful song. This one surprised me. At the beginning, I, I mentioned like a love song because I didn't read the lyrics. I didn't know what it was about. You know, we go on blind, right? And now I hear it's it about feels war. Like a love song. Yeah. And I think it's very tricky. It's a very interesting way to approach it. It's like this ballad, and but you can also argue relationships are about us and them, or me and her, or you and that. You know, so it's yeah. it is this kind of like conflict of interest that can even happen in any kind of relationship, whether it's a worldwide scale or if it's a personal one. You could. The both can equate to whatever interpersonal relationships that can lead to war, disagreements, contention. Hmm. Um, and that uh, crescendo part, boy, that blew me away. I had no idea that was coming. And when it, it happened like four times in the song, which I didn't ever want it to stop, but da, 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 and the yeah. chorus, and the yeah. big flourish of instruments in the chorus. Uh, what I loved is when they did it the third time, I think, is when it was just the sax playing, and they could have. It would have been nice to hear David do a solo there, but they had the sax do it. It was really, it was a really interesting choice to have the sax do the solo with no vocals going on, and it was just a flourish of the sax and the solo. So yeah, it's uh, amazing. Yeah. All right. So also well said. Just oh, know. thank you. Now Stephen says there's no breaks between these last three songs. Right, so Stephen, are you saying we should just play them through and comment? What's your suggestion here? We'll just wait a second here. We'll wait. Yeah. We'll wait do, for Stephen to answer the question he's typing as we... Yes. So yes to, yes to what? Yes, play it all the way through, or yes, stop? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, play it all the way through. Okay, here we go. So we'll, we'll comment. We'll, we'll do a running commentary. Okay, here we go. No, well, not too much talk. I feel like a lot of these songs are built around a bass line. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they go, yeah, very strong bass sound on this album. Yeah. We have a. Uh, this is Richard White going, Look what I can do! <laughs> Look what I can do on the keyboard! Sorry. It's got an echo effect on it. Obviously, like a jamming band almost. Yeah, this is they're definitely a jamming right now. Like yeah. it's a jam.
uh, lead vocals on this and the last song are Roger Waters. Roger Waters. Sing. Yeah. The lunatic is on the grass. <laughs> I've heard the this one too. <laughs> Sorry. Is on the grass. Just stop saying that. Just lie a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. And daisy chains and gloves. Got to keep the lunas on the path. The lunatic is in the hall. The lunatics are in my hall. The paper holds their folded faces to the floor. And every day the paper boy brings more. They did the uh, name of the album in the song. <laughs> sounds like you laughing. It actually sounded like you. Didn't it? It sounded like your laugh. Oh, there's a lunatic in my head that keeps talking during the song. You lock the door. Throw away the key There's someone in my head But it's not me And if the cloud bursts Thunder in your ear You shout and no one seems to hear I think there's like symbol I don't know why you keep doing it. There's nothing there. <laughs> Maybe the version that I've it's in my head has know. more of a crash. That's you! That's your laugh! Holy yeah. shit, it's your laugh! No, I'm sorry, that is your laugh. <laughs> oh my gosh, that is your laugh. That's hilarious. Here we go, oh. last song. Clips. I see how it's all one song here, yeah. Yeah. All that you touch and all that you see, all that you taste. This one's not familiar. All you feel and all that you love and all that you hate, all you distrust, all you say. Say, and all that you eat, and everyone you meet, and all 
revisits the beginning. The heartbeat. Heartbeat fade out. But, but, yeah. But, but, but. <laughs> it's fat. It's fascinating listening to this album. Officially now, I can say it. And this is what I said about "Wish You Were Here." That album as well. So thank you so much, Stephen. I'm saying it now for this one. Dark side of the moon. It's it's that album that's haunted. Don't close everything down. Don't close everything down. Okay. Okay. Uh. It's an it's a album that has been there in the uh, ether of pop culture of albums of all these in my life. Right? You know, it's one I've always heard about. I, I put up there with the Beatles album, like Revolver, Rubber Soul, mm-hmm. those type of albums. You hear about or the White Album. You hear about it all the time. Mm-hmm. Like you you hear of it, but who's listened to it, right? Mm-hmm. And millions have, but millions haven't. Like there's something. Like, I always like when people say, "I can't believe you haven't." Well, yeah, there's seven billion people or more now on the planet. Not everyone's heard everything. It's a weird concept to me that you think that everyone's heard everything. So mm-hmm. this is just an album that has escaped me. I just never said, I'm going to sit down and listen to it. I just never, it never occurred to me to take that time to do so. And especially with today's activities, it's just life is busy. You got to, you know, you got to spend an hour. Like I just got to sit here and listen to music for an hour. It's it's kind of the nature of our life now, which I say it's good or bad. It's just... You know, I work, you work, I have young kids, you have kids. Everyone's, you know, it's just like, I'm going to sit down and listen to an album for an hour. Mm-hmm. So I'm glad I did. And what I'm getting at is thank you, Stephen, for, for pledging this to us. Uh, not forcing me, but allowing me to carve out some time in my day you know, with my best friend saying, hey, you guys are going to listen to this album together like you would have when you're teenagers or whatever. And you're going to talk about it. And and yeah, it's just uh, an amazing experience. It's this isn't a criticism at all, but I find it because I'm, I'm not. How do I say this without well, sounding like I'm? I don't want to get angry anyone. I just find it fascinating. This is the album. So, you know, when you like someone like oversells a movie, maybe you're like, oh, it's, you gotta watch this movie. It's the best movie you ever seen. It's a number one at the box office for you know for fifty weeks in a row, and mm-hmm. uh, everyone's. And then you go watch, you're like, oh yeah, I, I liked it, and. I like this album a lot. There's a lot to take in here. I, I'm being very careful what I'm saying here. I guess there's a part of me. It's like I've heard of this album for so many years. It is the album that set Pink Floyd over the over the moon, <laughs> and and so I just find it fascinating. But this is the album. 45 million copies sold. It put them in the stratosphere, mm-hmm. and an amazing, incredible album. But I guess it's fascinating that it did what it did. Maybe it was the time of it. Maybe. The seventies is, you know, it was on the charts for you know ten years. I, I don't know. I just, it's almost like when something becomes viral. Mm-hmm. This is like an early example of something becoming viral, right? It's like you gotta, you gotta buy this. You have no idea. You gotta buy this album. You gotta buy this album. So body buys out. You, you gotta buy the album. So it becomes viral before the word was viral. Right. And I, and so I think videos on the internet are the same thing. It's like you gotta watch. You gotta watch this. And you're like, oh, okay, cool. I'll watch it. And then you watch it, like, oh, I get why people might think this is viral. Anyways, all these things are going through my head. I'm trying to like equate this to 2022. This released in 73. How did this album become what it is? It, there's a lot to take in for me. Yeah. 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 Um, I, but I loved it. I loved it. Yeah. But it's a fascinating piece of history that this is the album that everyone talks about. Yeah. I think it, it's as a testament to the album... I knew most of those songs, but I didn't know that they were from this album, right? Okay. So, okay, yeah. In terms of how famous they are, I've I've heard, I would say almost eighty percent of that album already, but didn't know it was from this album. Sure. Having said that, like, I absolutely see why this one got people's attention. To me, like, if I was a teenager going through whatever puberty going through you know during this time frame like things are so impressionable so going Mm. through this time and hearing these songs you would have you would have like attached to this music so strongly the same way that i did to the music of my time Mm -hmm. right and and i would i would say that people listening to this like they hold it almost like sacred because it's so like attached to their their brain 
Yeah, I think that's kind of. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, this is a this is a piece of time in history. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, forty five million copies sold. I would assume, let's just say, two thirds of that number, three quarters of that number, was the first ten years of its release. So this was a certainly a, a moment of time where the public, the fandom. Uh, they got fans from this album that they never had before, obviously, because mm-hmm. not every album sold that many copies, right? So mm-hmm. this is a historic, incredible piece of work. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm glad I got to experience it in order of the, you know, how it was supposed to be listened to. Like, you and I putting the record on, talking about it, listening, discussing our feelings on it. It's a, it was an amazing experience. I only knew the Money song. So it was really cool to hear everything. Uh, Doug's playing and vocal work was amazing. I mean, it was an amazing album. Mm-hmm. This is one I could, you know, I, obviously I could definitely, like if you and I were on a drive or something, you know, this is something you could put. This is a, that's a, that's not, not to say the problem, but that's, that's the thing about these types of albums. You can't just pop it in for a minute or two. You mm-hmm. know, you like you have to carve out time or a good car ride is a good time or when you're going for a jog or something. It's something to experience you're feeling the album. It's a story. It's like a movie. You don't, yeah, you just don't watch a movie at five minutes at a time. So yeah. this is like a, this is like a theatrical type experience. Yeah. Uh, well yeah. said. Well, thanks so much, Stephen. Thank you to everyone who made it this far. The video, I'm, you know, if, <laughs> if you, if you made it all the way to the end, say poopy shoes. <laughs> it, Oh, I can't wait to read the comments. I can't wait. Yeah, so yeah. if you made it all the... Uh, kudos to you. Poopy shoes on your face. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll, 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 uh, we'll see you on the next one. <laughs> <laughs>